Susie Walker here from Psychologies Magazine and I am delighted today to be joined by the wonderful Susan Tomlinson who is a top psychotherapist who's going to be talking to me today uh, about our, how to create a healthy relationship with money. Welcome Susan, really lovely to see you. Oh it's really lovely to be here Susie, thank you so much for having me on Psychologies. Okay. Right. So Susan um, has her own practice in London called Create the Space. Today she deals with everything from anxiety to stress, but today we're going to talk specifically about money. I know many of us having come through lockdown are very anxious about uh, our money, our jobs, and there's a lot of sort of um, very practical stuff that's going on out there as, you know, will I be made redundant? Will I come back from furlough? All of those things. So I just want to talk about, you know, the thing that we can control is the way we feel and think about money. Um, so at the moment, how is the present economic situation affecting our relationship to money? Well, I think that's, you know, it's a it's a great question because as you say, you know, people, there's so much fear around at the moment. People are really anxious and we're all anxious, understandably. You know, people have lost jobs, they've lost businesses overnight. As you say, they're coming back from furlough or are they? You know, so there's a tremendous amount of anxiety and uh, understandable kind of vulnerability around our relationship with money. Um, but I think what's really challenging is that we're already feeling, we already feel vulnerable about our relationship with money. You know, it's a very, very triggering topic. It's like the last great taboo. <laughs> you know, we um, would rather talk about anything else. In fact, I rather, I saw a really brilliant um, research uh, late, um, which showed that something like 44% of people, this is in the, in the West, would rather talk about those other two great taboos, sex and death, before they <laughs> even broach a conversation about yeah. money. You know, we so don't why, want to why is that? Why is that? Why do we find it so hard to talk about money? Well, I think, you know, again, it's a huge, huge question. But really, it's because essentially when we're talking about money, we're not really talking about money. We're not really talking about the pounds and the pence. We're talking about a lot of hidden kind of unconscious material that we project onto our relationship with money. Um, and a lot of those things are huge life forces, things like security. You know, I guess we were all feeling yeah. a little bit about that at the moment. But it can also represent freedom. It can represent power, comfort. I mean, even love, you know, and for everybody, they're going to have different unconscious forces and the list is going to be different. But it's just important to recognise that, you know, when we pull the lens out of what money actually is, you know, essentially, I think the first recorded use of money is something like 3000 BC. But it was just a, a system of exchange, you know. It was a system of tracking value. But somewhere along the line, we've lost that. It's become distorted. And it's, but it's now all about how valuable we are versus exactly. just the way of exchanging things. It's a, it's about I drive a big car, therefore I am more valuable. I earn more money, then I'm more valuable. So it's come to do with self worth versus as you just it's, you know I'm going to do this job and you need me two pound fifty and I'm going to yeah. do that. It's not about self worth. It's just about an exchange of goods or services. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So how do we, so how do we start building? So it's first of all, it's acknowledging that money doesn't mean money. Money can mean freedom. It can mean power. It can mean love. It can mean yeah. security. So it's yeah. all of those things. It's so the money isn't just money. It's it's more than that. So acknowledging that first. So where where do we go from there? How do we start building a healthier relationship with money? Well, I think you know the first thing is to recognise that we actually do have a relationship with money. You know, I think. It's so weird. It's one of those things that we, you know, it almost hides in plain sight. You know, we use money every single day, you know, every single moment. You know, there are many moments throughout the day where we're using money, but when it's omnipresent, but we're not really conscious of it. So it's almost as if we're trying to have a relationship with something that we don't want to talk about, we don't want to know about. And, you know, like I often think it's like, you know, imagine having a relationship with someone where, the, where one partner walks into the room and the other one immediately kind of rolls their eyes and goes, oh, I'll deal with you later. You know, I don't want to be talking to you. That's essentially what we are 
like with money you know and that's hardly the basis of a healthy relationship or we run yeah. away from it i mean it's taken me a long time for money to walk in the room and me go ah! <laughs> screaming out the room <laughs> i mean that was my usual response to money yeah. it's taken me a long time to get to the place where i can nod nod yeah. at it mutually yeah. um exactly. so, that, so, so the first thing is acknowledging that we do have relationships so how do you do we personify it and make it a person or how you know is there a good exercise to start building a good relationship with money how do we do it yeah well i think it's um yeah first of all to realize that we do have one and to recognize that for any healthy relationship no matter what it is as you say you know it's taken you time to just go to be able to even acknowledge it that's the point at which we've got to start you know this is a relationship you know and like any relationship it requires work you know and also to recognize we're going to have our ups, we're going to have our downs. That's just the way relationships are. But I think, you know, really the first thing to recognize is that we have a money story, you know, a we have a story. Yeah, a yeah. money story, an unconscious money story that we are telling ourselves unconsciously over and over again. And really, we want to kind of acknowledge that and to begin to break that down and recognize what our money story is. So when we run the psychology of money workshops, um, one of the first things we do is recognize that there's really two parts to this money story. The first is that there's a cultural money story going on um, of which we are individually relating to. And that's an incredibly complex story. And it's going to change, you know, obviously it's different as it, do, as it is in different parts of the world, but it's probably different in, you know, England as it is different to New Zealand or Greece or, you know, so, but it's about acknowledging what that story is, you know, and for us, it's hugely complicated. I mean, for example, take bankers, you know, we love to hate bankers. And since the 2008 crash, we love to hate them even more. You know, think about Gordon Gecko and his um, greed, greed is good. Greed is good. Greed is good. You know, we love it, but we hate it. We think it's disgusting. At the same time, we're fascinated. You know, why is it that Kim Kardashian has millions of followers? You know, are we keeping up with the Joneses now? We're we keeping up with the Kardashians. You know, it's really, it, it's complex. It's complex. Think of all the the sort of lines that are thrown around about money. Filthy lucre, we call it or even you know quotes from the bible i think we say something like what is it it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven what does that mean you know does that mean we can't be wealthy and enjoy wealth yeah. and be a good person you know so yeah. hugely complicated and how is, we need to be curious that's that's number one really in this money story how do we relate to the cultural money story? And we need to sort of spend some time uh, exploring that. And actually, before we get into sort of um, exploring our money story, I do sometimes say that, um, you know, in the workshops, obviously we put people in pairs and people work together, but it's quite useful to have a money buddy, you know, to have maybe someone that you work with, who you feel safe enough with to be open and honest. That might be your partner, but, you know, the one thing we know about relationships is that money is the number one thing that people argue about and divorce about. So it might be helpful to actually see where your partner's coming from. They could be your money buddy. But, yeah, getting back to the um, to the money story. So, yeah, we've got our cultural influence and the big then the, big, the bigger picture. Yeah, big story. And yeah. then we've got our family story. So we need to spend quite a lot of time exploring what we've inherited from our family what was our mother's money story you know what was she like with money you know was she the generous one what was your dad like was he the more kind of um circumspect about spending money but you know or or was it that your dad was kind of like off buying boats and announcing it you know at the last minute and your mum couldn't afford the groceries you know what was going on for you what have you inherited and in order to do that, we really got to focus on conscious money memories to begin with, you know, like really spend some time, take our pen and paper and write down what your first money memory was, you know, 
Um, and when you begin to kind of really slow it down like that, who was there? What was happening? How did you feel? How do you feel reflecting on that? You know, really spend some time exploring it. And then begin to collect other money memories, you know? Did you get pocket money? What was that like? Did you, what did you do with your first paycheck? You know, what was it like having, um, you know, living with, you know, your mum and your dad? What memory of money did they, do you remember? Were there covert looks when it was coming up to payday? Was it talked about? You know, so really begin to collect these money memories. And what we want to do is almost imagine that they're in a book, that we're actually creating a money storybook of our lives. And look at those money memories and imagine that perhaps each of them is a chapter. Are there any themes developing? Do they need to come together? What are the themes? And then once you've got the themes, is there an overarching theme? So what might be the title of that money book? That's you know? good. Yeah. Um, and when, when, once you've got your money title, you're very, very close to being able to work out what it is that you're projecting unconsciously onto money. So f- say, for example, your money title might be, uh, I'm just thinking from our workshop, we had like something like, you know, save and save and save and save and never feel I have enough. You know, so that's a fabulous title right there that you can then recognise, oh, okay, it's not far to see that for that individual, it's possibly about security and safety. Yeah. So spend any money is really scary. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm just thinking as you were talking there about, ooh, what's my money story? Oh. And then thinking about um, I, you know, the memories that are coming to mind are actually quite, I feel ashamed do you know what I mean there was there was not enough I you know I came from a working class family and um you know a lot of it was there wasn't enough money um and so we didn't have we didn't have enough sometimes to pay the bills or and that was really tough and um and I'm wonder, I'm just thinking on that I'm just reflecting on that I'm wondering how that has affected my the choices are because I haven't gone for security or safety I've actually gone for the other the other way of being actually quite brave in the decisions I've made. So actually I've done it in a quite positive way, but I can see how it could mold, mold you to make very, very strong decisions about money. Um, But so it just occurs to me is that within these themes and this title, it's the, the, it's the emotional reaction, isn't it? That you're having money and it's, you know, the story is there, but, is it a tragedy or is it a comedy or is it a love story or, and I suppose, wouldn't it be wonderful if it was a real good body movie? You know, if I could change my money story into like an archetypal body, you know, that we're going on an adventure together, that would be amazing rather than the grand tragedy that it has been No, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. So you, once you've got your story and then you, you've kind of acknowledged that, um what then what do you do then so how do you start changing the story i mean if i did want to make the leap from making a tragedy to a comedy (laughs) or whatever it is how do we do that how do we change the story well i think the first thing is to recognize that you've you know you've got the story and to see it appearing you know to catch yourself because once something becomes conscious it's like recognizing it's like ah okay so say for example you know if you've got a present day money issue right now you know how can you see the connection between you know that those echoes really from the past yeah how are those echoes affecting this present money story yeah Um, and 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 i guess it's about um you know First of all, the first stage is to recognize it, to catch it, and to then perhaps pause. And in a bigger picture way, you know, how can we develop the kind of money story that we want, you know? And I think 
you know, it's quite interesting to kind of recognize, you know, in the here and now. So an, another exercise that I really like to do, and we, we often start our workshops with this, which is to um, get into pairs, so maybe work with your money buddy, and to each take out your wallet and spend 10 minutes just unpacking your wallet in front of the other person. And what that does is it very much puts you into the observer part of yourself. It's like almost as if you're looking at your wallet for the first time, like, wow, you know, yeah. what is this? Is it heavy? Is it big? Have I got lots of coins in there? Like, am I carrying around receipts that I don't need? Like, what is that? Or is it, it's just my, is it, is, yeah, I know. <laughs> Um, you know, or is it my phone, you know, because so often now people are paying on Apple Pay, aren't they? And, and, and almost money is even more invisible than it was before. We're just tapping. So what does that do to my present relationship with money? And yeah. about my money book and this present relationship with money, what's the relationship between the two? And actually in, it's making me think of another exercise that's by, um, uh, it's come from The Soul of Money, which is a, lot, it's a great book by someone called Lynn Twist. Uh, and she talks about, imagine that you and money were in couples therapy together. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I like that. I know. It's so brilliant. So, you know, what would you say to each other about each other? You know, what would the dialogue be? And, um, and, yeah. and, and I, I just really like that because it's kind of, it makes you almost, as we were talking earlier, you know, you were saying, oh, do you personify money? I mean, almost you could. You could personify money in that case, you know, as you begin to build a relationship with it, you know, what does money represent? I love that idea. I love that idea. So, so if you gave money a voice and you were in couple therapy with money, <laughs> that would be amazing. Oh, my God. I, I know. <laughs> it's a brilliant yeah it's really it's, brilliant yeah but what i'm hearing you say is it's being able to start having a conversation and uh, one is acknowledging that it exists and giving it a personality or, or a way of communicating with it that can right. you know so you, we talked about how to build a healthy relationship yeah. how do you build a relationship with something that's it's um hasn't got a personality so if we can make give it a personality and start interacting with it you may yeah. get the ahas and then once you've had the aha of oh this is my money story and i want to change my money story um maybe then looking at steps that you it's some practical steps i presume that you can take rather than oh stuff it i'm gonna go and I need, you know, I'm feeling like this, so I'm going to throw a credit card at it and spend money yeah. that I haven't got because I just, whatever. Yeah. So, it's, you know, you talked about the magic pause, like pause, wait, yeah. wait. Yeah. What do we do at that point? What do we do then? How well, we <laughs> well, I think it's really interesting because um, I think, you know, we talked about earlier about how money is sort of, really made up and that actually originally it was just a you know barter it was it's, it's it was for a medium of exchange so if we can kind of acknowledge that money really sits between it's almost a bridge between our internal selves uh and what might be going on for us internally and how we uh show up in the world and how we navigate in the world it sits between those two things it's almost how we manifest, you know, um, it's a tool to do that, but it's not, it, it, it's, it, it's not the thing, if that makes sense. So if we just for the moment, put it aside and just go, okay, so between my internal world and my external world, what do I really want? Like, what do I really value? What do I most want to contribute to the world? You know, these are huge questions, obviously. But, you know, once you take the money out of the equation and you realize it's about, it can add value, it's just about a way of creating value, then yeah. you can begin to kind of recognize, okay, 
actually my relationships and my friendships are hugely important to me. So, for example, you know, I want to spend, I want to be able to spend more time. So how can money work as a tool in order for me to do that? So it's almost like putting money in its in its full position. It's not taking on this huge thing that's unconscious and, you know, we, we're not really engaging with it properly. It's like going, okay, well, this once we've worked through what it is to us, we put, can put it aside and really reflect on our values. I mean, those are massive questions. You know, it sounds really easy to say what do you want, yeah. but you know, what, do you, what do you want, you know? What do you want in this world? Okay, so you're saying all that, and I think it's that what you're saying is absolutely, I totally resonate with everything you said. However, I think there is, I don't know whether it's just me, but I, I suspect it's not. It's about how you, we use money to self-soothe, you know, yeah. so you're feeling anxious or you're feeling, um, you know, it's just a way of making yourself feel better in the moment, you know, um, and I know that I'd certainly use money to do that in the past, you know, to buying things that I don't need in the moment just to make myself feel better. I mean, I'm a lot, I'm a lot better now, but it's taken me a while to learn how to. How, what What do you do if you're using money to self soothe? You know, you, you're spending, using spending, buying things you don't need to make yourself feel better. How do yeah. you tackle that? This is the last okay. question. Because I know we've gone way over, but I just find it so fascinating to actually talk about this. It's good. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, in that case, it would be about unpacking, you know, what is happening for you in that moment when you're just about to get your credit card out and, you know, uh, soothe, as you say. You know, what was the, the trigger? What was it that made you feel so uncomfortable? And and that's also then recognising that, that that relationship between money and the external world because, there's something going on for you in that moment internally that you're not wanting to sit with. Yes. Yeah. You know? And I think, I mean, you know, the more I've done the self-development, the more I've learned to meditate, the more I've learned to calm myself, to self-soothe in other ways that are healthier. Um, I mean, whereas before I might have uh, bought a cake, a glass of wine and a new <laughs> dress. <laughs> but I mean, it's over time I've learned to do other things. Um Definitely, but it, but it is a kind of a definitely a journey to be able to do that, isn't it? To, to, oh, to completely. That. And also, like what I'm hearing there is there's kind of you know that's an there's an internal kind of um, difficulty that you're trying to solve externally, but actually yeah. it's just a distraction because that internal feeling's yeah. still there, you know, and you know, uh, it's, uh, you know, it sounds there's something kind of quite quite painful about that so what is going on in that into yeah. your mind, into your yeah. point how can I soothe myself yes. in other ways but you know that's that's recognizing a pattern of a relationship of your relationship with money straight off yeah, yeah. so even just to having this you know short chat and for me it's it, it, it is and it there's deep work to be done isn't it because even as you're talking about that, it makes me feel like yeah it was all about for me the journey's all will be about feeling my feelings and I've always been afraid of feeling uncomfortable or stressed or whatever so I've been trying to distract myself or get out of feeling that but what I've learned over time is just to feel my feelings and they just dissipate and it's it's okay you know and I'm not destroyed by them um, but you know yeah. even as we're talking I'm like wow you know it's taken me a long time to learn that um, and this yeah. kind of information so you know may, people may use alcohol they may use drugs yeah. they may use spending it's exactly. finding it's, you know it's it's going within isn't it and going absolutely. on that journey so it could be money but it could be something else yeah absolutely it's it's what how we distract ourselves it's it's the you know the symptom of of internal discomfort you know of trying to distract yeah. from as you say, feeling your feelings which you know but i i always like to think of um you know feelings are kind of like mercury you know they kind of <laughs> they move yeah. and shape and and you know and they change um and yeah you know and if you don't feel them if you just place them over here they just come back <laughs> you know they just kind of come back in a different in a different form in a different way yeah. and so if you can you know sit with the discomfort but you know that's a huge that's life i mean that's a huge 
you know, life. Yeah, but at, least, but at least it's, you know, when we start looking at stuff. So I always say around the self-development journey that we talk about psychologies all the time is like you 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 come in at the problem so it may be your problem is money or it's food or it's alcohol or it's relationships or whichever way and it yeah. kind of they all they all come back to the it's same fair. kind of exactly. wisdom in places which is doing the inner work and there's lots of and there's millions of coaches out there there are so many exercises out there but the main thing is you don't have to my my message over and over again is you don't have to suffer there are people that can help you there are people to support you there's books you can read but you don't have to you don't have to keep on doing the same old thing it's the kind of classic thing of keep on doing the same old thing you'll get the same results and it's being as you say being curious as you said earlier being curious and starting to work with this susan has an amazing practice called create the space um, with lots of resources so down below you'll be able to see all the websites etc that you can contact susan and start exploring that if that's with you susan thank you so much for your wisdom today i found that so interesting so yes. interesting I mean, it's been really lovely talking with you. It's been really interesting. But actually, just one thing I would like to add: the, the curiosity yeah. and then then kindness. I would say, you know, kindness yeah. to yourself. So, and, you know, to your point, there's so much help out there. So, you know, get the support that you need. Yeah, I, that's 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 right. Because often we we don't learn to be kind to ourselves. Absolutely. And, uh, hence, that we're trying to do it in fake ways. You know, we're trying to make ourselves feel a bit better rather than true self-soothing, which is about self-nurturing. Yeah. 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 Susan, thank you so much for your time today. Lots of love, and I will speak to you yeah. soon. Lovely. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.